Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody, and welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. So, you want violence? You got violence, right? The market woke up today, did absolutely nothing till about 2 o'clock. Uh, today, if you don't know, was uh, the Fed minutes. Uh, they were expected to raise 75 bases. They raised 75 bases, and then the history of violence commenced, right? And you, you're right now what you're looking at is basically an intraday chart on uh, the NASDAQ, right? NASDAQ 100 to the Qs. Um, if you've been trading for a very long time, there, there's, a, there's a word that's, uh, that, that traders kind of throw around all the time, right? First word is patience, right? Be patient, stay patient. Most traders, again, uh, for the first you know, two, three, four years, they, they really don't have a concept of uh, what they're actually waiting for. That's kind of the first word. The second word they kind of use all the time is volatility. Traders love volatility. No, 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 no. Traders love average true range. So basically what that means is, you know, before like Tesla and Amazon split, Tesla would have like a $40 average true range. Uh, Amazon would have a $60 average true range. That's called average true range. That is the area of the stock that can perform within that range on a daily basis, the average true range. What people use, you know, unfortunately misuse average true range and they use the word volatility. Volatility is unpredictable, okay? Volatility is what you saw today. Violence, right? Mayhem, um, just out of control aggression and both sides of the market are pretty much at the point of feeling like a victim instead of feeling uh, like the hunter, right? Like the alpha hunter that most traders are. You want a boring day, right? And I've, I've been saying this for years and years and years. You want a boring day. You want a very methodical day. You want a, you want a day that is predictable. What today was, was none of those things, right? And once, uh, once the news came out, they came out with the 75 bases, well, you saw this really aggressive sell-off right from the word go. The cues literally went from 291 to 285. I mean, again, if that's if that's not called aggression, I would love to see an example up. But what's crazy about it is once Powell started talking, and I guess the Q&A uh, aspect of the Fed started, the Qs went nuts. They went absolutely nuts. They literally went from uh, 285 all the way to 294. You're talking about a $6 range down to a $9 move up only for him to stop talking. And the Qs literally went from 293 all the way down to 282. So violence, right? Very, very aggressive violence. Um, I try to, I try to leave anything alone that I can't, that I can't control, right? And I, you know, I usually stop trading after lunch anyway. I, you know, I think the morning window, uh, once it closes, you know, around one o'clock, I have no, you know, I have zero interest of the market because again, it's unpredictable, right? Usually, you're, it's going to be headline driven. It's going to be, you know headlines out of left field and today not only the, the the bulls get punched in the neck the first time around right then the bears got punched in the neck 30 you know 30 seconds later only for the bulls to get a haymaker uh, into the close and the big picture of what happened here it's not the headlines it's not exactly what the fed was talking about the big picture continues to be this is all happening okay keep this in mind this is all happening below the 50 day moving average, right? So when you see a stock that's moving up, it doesn't mean it's going higher, right? There was literally one stock, we talked about this, we, it was literally one stock in this whole formation in the last three, four days that looked very, very good, right? And it had its moments and it had its really good pivots. And even that one, right, known as Tesla, they took to the woodshed today. Again, it doesn't look like a lot, but you had a $14 candle into the close, right? This is this is violence. This is 14. It's like if you multiply 14, right? 14 times three, it's the equivalent of a $42 candle pre-split, right? That's violence. That's very, very aggressive. So my advice, especially for newer traders, right? You want to use the word violence. You want to use the word, um, you want to use the word aggression, okay? 
That's fine. You can use those words. Those words should not apply to your trading. It's, it's unpredictable, folks. I'm, I'm telling you that the key to trading is to, 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 to really try to curb your emotions, right? It's to curb your FOMO. It's to curb every emotional DNA molecule that you possibly have that you're thinking straight, right? That you're thinking uh, with common sense. When you have a scenario like this, how can you possibly put yourself in a position to control your emotions, to control technically and look at the market in a very, very, um, you know, um, unbiased sort of way. And that's what today was. It was, it was a, it was a, it was a lesson in what the stock market can do when the unpredictable factor comes, right? When the volatility comes. And again, I've been saying this all the time for years and years and years. They love the idea of volatility until it becomes volatile. If you survived today after two o'clock, God bless you. If you made money today after two o'clock, God bless you. If you lost money today uh, after two o'clock, again, let this be a learning lesson, right? Let this be a learning lesson of where you fit in, right? Again, remember, boring is cool. Lethargic is cool. That means you are in the driver's seat, right? Predictability is cool. What this is, is called an EKG machine and all EKG machines are doing is playing with your heart. And that's exactly uh, what today did. Looking forward, right? Looking forward to kind of tomorrow's session and beyond. Keep this in mind, right? We had a digestion period right around here before we went lower. We had a digestion period here with even a rally. Short term over the 50 day moving average, we gave back back, back with the CPI number one lower. And today, uh, pretty much engulfed the last three days of buying. You can see here the green ca candles, which basically means a higher close than, than opens. And now we're looking at this 280 level coming up and any close below 280 on the queues. I mean, you can see how much downward traction there is. And if you guys remember, I don't know if I mentioned this on uh, the Tuesday video, there was a massive buying spree. They were coming for the 266 spies for, for October, not once, not twice, but three times. They came for a total of about $17 million worth of spies, the 266. Keep this in mind. At that time, this is what, 20 points out of the money. The next day, which was yesterday, they came for another 15 million of the 262 uh, October put. So there's a lot of institutional money flow that is betting directional, right? And that's a, it's a very, very big sign. They're betting directional. They're on the right side of the market because we, we continue to build Uh, below the 50-day moving average. And the most important part is they're betting the bottom of this channel here, which is 269, right? Everybody see that at the bottom of the channel here? So that's where they're getting their measure potential bets. Here's the problem for the bulls, right? It's very, very tough to turn around to enter tomorrow's day and say, you know what? We sold off very aggressively. We're going to rally tomorrow. Remember, it's not a rally. It's stocks going up for a very short period of time. And, and no matter how good of a rally was today in any one of your stocks that you were watching, the end of the day was kind of a demise, right? It was a destruction. doesn't make a difference what, what, you, uh, what you looked at. A lot of stocks broke down today. I mean, not even broke down, continuation of the breakdown, right? Amazon lost its whole range. You guys remember Amazon last week was great. It lost its whole range today. And you know, it looks like it has a date for this 115 level. They started betting really aggressively uh, on Amazon. Look at Google. They started coming for the short term 99 calls, right? 99, 95 calls. That's where the directional uh, bets are coming from. Uh, a name, for example, like Airbnb, they were really uh, coming hard for this thing, right? That's what I said. That's what you said. That's what she said, right? But they were coming hard for this thing. They were coming for the 108 short term expiration. Again, that's the bottom of the channel here. So you can see where all these institutional money flow bets are being placed, institutional money, right? Not retail money, institutional money. And at the end of the day, you can think what you want, say what you want. At the end of the day, the institutional money flow is the most important part because that is what's driving the underlying securities. So it's very, very tough to turn around to make a game plan for a, a retail trader going into tomorrow and saying, I like this stock. I like that stock. I like this stock. I mean, How? Right? How? I mean, there's, there's so many stocks that have broken down that didn't rally, that are breaking down more, and they look really, really good. And, and names like, for example, a name like a Marriott that I don't cover a lot, but look at this close here. You have your first close here in this whole range here. This thing is going lower, right? The hotel space. Look at, look at Hilton. Same thing, right? Same thing, same chart, right? It looks really, really good. Let me give you some technology names to watch. Um, look at a name, for example, um, look at a name like Moderna, right? They're saying COVID's over. 
the hell we need you for, right? What do we, what do we need you for? So look at the bottom of the range here. This thing looks, you know, pretty dismal. You got Disney, right? If, if, you, if the play is the hotels and the hotels are breaking down, this is the whole leisure, you know, leisure group, right? Disney first closed below support. Disney starts taking down this, this channel here, man. This thing has a lot more room to go. So there's a lot of broken names. There's a lot of broken charts. There's a lot of broken spirits. A lot of traders uh, got caught in strength. Uh, and the most important part is, is they're still looking for answers. And here's the biggest answer of the wall. Again, we're underneath the 50, right? Nothing, like I said, nothing good uh, happens to the bears above the 50. Nothing good um, for the bulls happens below the 50. Sure, you'll get your, your days of um, reverse trend, right? Or counter trend moves. But at the end of the day, the, the trend is still the trend. So tomorrow, I like still like a lot of names. Uh, Meta, I think, goes lower. You got Amazon. First of all, Meta cuts some uh, the workforce. They're cutting their workforce. Amazon looks lower. Uh, Disney, we talked about. NVIDIA, I'm watching this thing. It's not imminent, NVIDIA. But look at this little channel here, this little baby, baby channel here. Today was very strong. Don't get me wrong. Very, very strong. And look at look at its roller coaster ride, right? You had, you had NVIDIA going from 136 to 132, back to 140, back to 131, right? Right? Right. So moral of the story is, guys, uh, if you're a new trader, you don't run, right? You don't run to the sun. This is what today is. You know, you, you know, you know this is why people don't play earnings, right? You know, people, you know, a, a normal trader is not going to just gamble into earnings, okay? Because it's volatile. It's unpredictable. Even if you have the earnings in front of you, you don't have the stock as results. Well, a Fed day is earnings times a thousand. And that's exactly what we saw today. Guys, stay safe. Um, you know, obviously tomorrow, if we could get a gap up tomorrow, it would be great because I'd love to see some of these stocks get stuffed into supply for a potential green to red move. And if they lose the bottom channels, we should get some pretty good premium. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Stay safe. And hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.